What's the difference between sulfur conversion and sulfur recovery? What do my demister pads do and why are they there when they cause me so many headaches? Trust me, you're not the first person to ask these questions. And in the 30 years that we've had, we've answered them before. Let's answer them for you now. Welcome to the Experts Network. our channel. I'm Leah Gettler with Sulfur Experts. So Sulfur Experts has been around the world talking to all sorts of people working in all sorts of units and we've noticed some trends in the questions that we get asked. So here are two of the most common questions we get about SRUs in our SRU FAQ. So the first question is what's the difference between sulfur conversion and sulfur recovery? Well to put it simply, sulfur conversion is how much H2S turns into elemental sulfur in your Klaus unit. Sulfur recovery is how much of that elemental sulfur actually goes into your pit or your tank. But let's go into more detail. Conversion is your basic conversion equation, in minus out over in. And when we're talking about an SRU unit, we're looking at the H2S gas in your feed gases, or maybe COS depending on what you take into your SRU, and we're looking at your Klaus tail gas, which is either the outlet stream of your final condenser or your coalescer. And in that stream, we're looking at the H2S, SO2, COS, and CS2. Remember, we have to account for COS and CS2 because they are selective reactions that happen in your reaction furnace. And we gotta be looking at all the sulfur molecules that are exiting, except for elemental sulfur, because that's a product. That's not what we're looking for in conversion. That's what we look for in recovery because there might be some elemental sulfur vapor or liquid sulfur entrainment that goes from your condenser on into your stack or down into your TGTU, depending on what you have. And that, if that goes into a stack, that directly affects your uh, recovery efficiency, which you don't want. So again, your recovery is your conversion minus the losses from your sulfur vapor and sulfur liquid entrainment. So how do we minimize those two terms? Well, it has to do with the operation of your final condenser. So you wanna make sure that it's operating at 130 degrees Celsius or 260 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's as cold as you can get without risking solidifying the elemental sulfur there. That means you're condensing as much as possible, so your sulfur vapor losses are as small as possible. In order to minimize your liquid entrainment, you want to make sure that your demister pad is where it should be, that it's stable, it's installed properly, and it's not plugged. You also want to make sure that there's no liquid level buildup in your condenser, because otherwise the gas flow is going to go over it, pick those droplets up, and carry them right on through, which you don't want. The worst case we've seen is about 20% liquid sulfur entrainment, which equates to about 2.1% drop in your overall recovery efficiency if that's going straight to a stack. And I know 2.1% might not sound like a lot, but when you're talking between 95 or 98.5 and 96.5, that can be the difference between meeting your stand or your uh, emissions regulations or not. And that can be mean fines, all sorts of stuff. And the last thing you want is that due to just a non-functioning or improperly functioning condenser. So SRU FAQ number two. Why do my demister pads keep plugging and what can I do about it? Because they cause so many headaches and problems and pressure drop limitations and throughput limitations and I, I get it. They can be a pain in the butt when they aren't functioning properly. But I am going to give you the stereotypical answer of they are there for a reason. They're there to minimize the liquid sulfur entrainment going from that condenser downstream. And like we just talked about, if that's in your final condenser, those, uh, those droplets are going to uh, directly affect your overall recovery efficiency, but they also still affect your conversion in your unit if they're in the interstage condensers. So they do this in two ways. The first way is they increase the partial pressure of sulfur vapor in the unit. And so if you look at the Klaus reaction, sulfur vapor is one of the products. So if you increase the concentration of the sulfur in the unit, you're going to shift the equilibrium to the right, which means lower conversion in your downstream converter beds. Similarly, if you increase the partial pressure of sulfur vapor, you're actually going to increase the sulfur dew point as well, meaning that your sulfur vapor is going to condense on your bed at a higher temperature. About 5% increase in entrainment 
equates to about 1.4 degrees Celsius or 2.5 degrees higher dew point temperature in the bed. And for most beds, this isn't really an issue. But if you don't have a good margin on the operating temperature between the known dew point of your unit and where your unit is operating, that can mean that at certain spots in your, in your bed, you're going to be condensing that liquid sulfur on your bed. And that blocks off the active sites in your catalyst, meaning that you're not providing enough surface area to reach the conversion that you were before. Your active sites are blocked. But if you have liquid sulfur in your bed, it's not a really big deal. All you have to do is heat your bed up a little bit and that sulfur is just going to evaporate right off and go down into your next condenser. There's no residual problem with um, your equipment issues or the, the catalyst itself won't be damaged or anything like that. But keep in mind, increasing the operating temperature of your converter is going to increase the operating temperature of your class reaction. And since it's exothermic, again, you're going to be shifting your equilibrium to the left and overall reducing your conversion efficiency. So now that we know why they're there, but they're still giving us problems, so how do we fix those? Well, the first thing to check is to make sure that your demister pad isn't broken. If it's looking like this, you know it's not doing its job properly. Second, make sure that it's actually installed properly. It's like a good internet connection, strong and stable. If it's buffeting around in the gas flow, again, is it really doing its job? You also want to make sure that it's perfectly horizontal unless otherwise stated by your vendor. If there's any sort of slope in it, then that encourages the sulfur, sulfur droplets to run down and condense on the demister pad, which plugs it off and can also lead to corrosion. That leads us to the third point, is making sure that if you, that you follow proper hygiene procedures in your unit during a turnaround. So if you've just installed fresh catalyst, make sure you do a proper air blow to make sure that those catalyst fines are removed from the unit before they enter the condensers in a stepwise process. This is really easy, but if you need our help, feel free to give us a call. You want to make sure that those fines don't get into your tubes or your demister pad, because as soon as you put elemental sulfur in the unit, it's going to react with those fines and make sulfur creep, which is basically impossible to remove except for mechanical removal. And that means shutting everything down again in extended turnaround time for reasons that you just really don't want. So are you still having problems even after doing all those? Well, make sure that you've checked your condenser outlet temperature. It should be 120 degrees C or 250 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to make sure that this is as cold as possible, but you're not freezing sulfur. You can score the outside of the pipe with a stick of uh, elemental sulfur and see if it melts or not. If it melts, then you're good to go. If it stays frozen, then your pipe is too cold and you need to wrap it with something like uh, steam jacketing, like ContraTrace or something similar like that. There's lots of options in the market. Second thing to do is check the design of your unit and make sure that there's enough disengagement space and that your deflector plate is where it should be. If your gas drop is coming in and those droplets are hitting right onto your demister pad, well, no wonder it's plugging. Make sure you give enough space and change of direction for those droplets to fall out of suspension and actually go down into, run, into the rundown. Similarly, you also want to make sure that there's no liquid level, liquid level buildup in the unit, as we discussed earlier in FAQ number one. And you want to make sure that there's no areas where that could occur, whether that's either uh, uneven leveling in the condenser or maybe some something's missing, like the refractory is missing inside, uh, and make sure that there's no cold spots either. If you've tried all of these things and none of them are working and you still have problems, there are some plants out there that have chosen to put a heating coil on the demister pad itself, and that heats up the demister pad and keeps the sulfur from freezing there anyways. Now, it does work for some places, but you do want to make sure that you install it properly because these types of solutions can be super finicky and if the steam starts leaking you can actually just create more of a problem than you started with because that steam is now colder than the solidification temperature of the sulfur and you're blasting that right onto your demister pad and you're only making your problems worse. On that note make sure that if your outlet pipe is too cold, like we discussed earlier, you wanna make sure that you're wrapping it with steam jacketing, not the heat coil tracing like this, because again, this isn't gonna do very much for you. So those are two of the most common questions we get regarding SRUs, and I hope if you guys learned something today, you will subscribe, ring the bell, like this video, and if you have a question, feel free to leave it in the comments below, and maybe your question will be answered in the next FRU FAQ, sorry, SRU FAQ. Thanks, see you next time.